Three, two, one. Hey, Internet friend, this is Magic Brad with the Magic Brad Show, and guess who I've got? I've got Mike Peters. You there, Mike? I am here. Thanks for having me, Brad. Appreciate it. I think you're out on the west side of the world, aren't you? Yeah, I live in Los Angeles right now, but I'm originally from Florida. Um, it's a very different world than uh, Los Angeles. Kind of. So I'm in Minneapolis, Minnesota, so you guys get less snow than we do. Yes, much less snow. I am not a fan <laughs> of that. I, I, I did live in New York City for a while, and... You know, experienced shoveling my car out of the snow and decided I was going to find a place a little bit warmer now. I was out in LA for a little while. It's an interesting place out there because if you want to see snow, you just drive up to the mountain, right? It's true. I mean, we've got everything close by. That and earthquakes. Yeah, that's something I'm familiar with hurricanes, but earthquakes are still a little frightening for me. Can't tell we, they're coming. We get the tornadoes up here. They come and they hit and they just kill you or they don't. And then they're yeah. done. So the mosquitoes you got to look out for. Definitely. Now, how long have you lived in LA then? So I've been in LA for about eight years now. Um, originally from Florida, I moved to New York City, Pennsylvania. I lived in Atlanta for a long time and then um, went back to Florida briefly and then moved the family out to Los Angeles about eight years ago. Very cool. I saw in your little bio thing here that you did some touring with rock bands. Yeah, right? I, um, so I, I grew up playing sports. Obviously that's my connection with Go Dog. Um, grew up playing sports, didn't make it to the major leagues, but I. Um, in high school started playing music and i had several bands of my own spent a lot of time touring the east coast and that you know turned into something much bigger and i had a, a friend of mine their band was signed to a major label and they gave me a call and said hey what are you up to do you want to go on that go on tour with us in a week to japan so i said sure and then i spent the next six years of my life traveling with bands like uh, green day and blink 182 and you know a lot of a lot of big acts out there in the early 2000s yeah, I did a little bit of that. I like working behind the scenes rather than the front. It's kind of fun. Yeah, I had I had my I was in, you know, I was on stage and I was also like, you know, behind stage teching and, and working with uh, equipment as well. Yeah, well, the tech part kind of segues into your company. I did some looking around at it. It's pretty fascinating. And you're in a pretty good spot to be right now with the COVID thing. So tell us a little bit about and first, how did you did you you know how they come up with the name Go Dog? How did they yeah, it's a, a little bit of a mystery, but um, the the way we came up with it is uh, Seth, who's our CEO, is his son's on a baseball team called the Diamond Dogs, and I guess for years in the stands, everybody just hears "Go dog, go dog, okay. go dog." So I that's, figured it was I, something that, like that. I figured yeah. it was something like that. So he named Definitely. it after his son. Cool. So tell us more about it. I looked at it a little bit. Basically, it's uh, the ability to use live stream to capture sports, which I think is great right now because everybody's got a social distance. Now you can kind of let the world see the game, right? Uh, yeah, absolutely. So we started this company about three years ago um, in response to us having corporate backgrounds and traveling quite a bit and, you know, unfortunately missing some of our own children's activities. So we wanted to create something where we could keep the communities connected, keep parents involved and, you know, keep, you know, the youth athlete on that same path and staying connected with that. Uh, it's definitely taken a turn now that COVID has happened and mm -hmm. it's a runaway train for us as far as sales are concerned. And, you know, it's a hap it's, it's an exciting moment. Honestly, we've got uh, irons in the fire all over the place. We hired a sales team of about 15 across the country. And, you know, it's turned into this moment where we're trying to figure out how to future proof complexes, how to get kids back to play and everything in between that. We also give the ability to download and save games, save highlight clips as well, which is obviously very important to uh, the end user and the parent going forward. Do you, do you uh, go venture outside of sports? Do you get into other industries and things too? Yeah, we are very much open to that. Um, our sweet spot has been kind of that seven to like 15 year old sports athlete. Uh, got a lot of attention on baseball. Had a conversation this morning with a high school out of Tennessee about their performing arts facility. So we are definitely agnostic in that sense. and have the ability to customize URLs so it doesn't feel like it's a sports branded thing. It can be anything really. And I am very interested in the music space as well. Um, reached out to a couple of my old colleagues about, you know, what they're doing now that they're not touring and playing. And a lot of venues are now looking for live streaming as well. And I think we can fill that void. As yeah, that's the, the reason I asked is because I'm in the event industry. I, you know, my, my brand Magic Brad is because I uh, started doing magic at corporate events and that got me into producing trade shows. And then there's these other kind of awards banquets and all these events. Yeah. They're going to need something like that. And um, here's a little tip for you if you wanted to move into it, is I just had a conversation with a magician friend of mine out in Las Vegas. They're not doing nothing. They're, they're driving Uber because they have nothing to do. Wow. 
So I was talking with him because you got that social dis distancing thing. And I think what's going to happen with a lot of these high ticket, big events, because, you know, you got this big giant auditorium, but you can't put the people in it. You got to keep them all six sure. feet apart. So what I think is going to happen is these big casino lounges are going to do like VIP $1,000 or $5,000 package tickets and then live stream the other stuff out so people can see the shows like pay-per-view. So does yep. your system have something like that in it where if someone wants to watch a game or a show or a performance arts uh, event, they can like pay nine ninety five and watch the thing from Thailand? Absolutely. Um, we've got testimonials of people that have watched in Italy, France. I've been on a plane flying over Canada watching my son play sports as well. Uh, and it is something we can turn into, a, it's either a league model, what we call it, which is you're allowing everyone that's registered to play in that league to participate and watch the video. And that's how you can make up, like you said, money on the door that you're losing, uh, whether it's social distancing. A lot of leagues I'm talking to are only going to allow one parent per player or 50 parents per field or whatever it may be. Um, wow. So that, that is definitely a thing, but there's also the ability to turn into a pay-per-view. So a lot of the tournament facilities we work with, we turn into a subscription model where parents come in, players come in, or the tournament director will send out an email saying, we're excited to bring you live streaming. Here's, you know, a promo code to, to watch it. And it's whatever they want it to be. So we can do, you know, $6.99 for a day pass. We can do $12.95 for a weekend pass. It's, it's really a customizable moment where we can work with the facilities to create that. I think you ought to dig into Las Vegas and see if you can get something going there because there's a lot yeah, of we had a really good conversation made. with the city of Vegas recently and um, you know they brought something to our attention about esports. So esports is really oh, yeah. you know, getting some attention right now. And I grew up without, you know, video games, uh, which I was happy about. I grew up, you know, climbing trees and playing in the woods. But yeah, I've got <laughs> two kids now that are, you know, I'm trying to manage their screen time as well. But you know, this is a cool moment to see like if esports is going to be big, we can absolutely live stream that as well, and they can create pay per view models around that. And I think it is going to be kind of big. Some of the malls are talking about those big anchor stores. They're saying, heck with the anchor stores, we're just going to turn this into an esports facility. Yep. Talk to several people that are in that business that are, you know, buying up old malls and turning them into complexes for sports and anything really. Very cool. So you'd mentioned a performing arts center, and then you got these little league groups. Mm -hmm. So what kind of price point? I mean, could it how affordable is it for a little guy like a little league team versus the MGM Grand? <laughs> sure. We, uh, I mean, the price is the same, to be quite honest with you. We, um, we are very honest in the pricing. We've got a very, you know, comparable product to most out there. And I think we're extremely affordable and high quality. Uh, generally speaking, it's kind of dependent on the wish list and number of cameras. So let's okay. say we're, we're installing 10 cameras at a baseball field. Uh, you know, it's around two to three thousand dollars per camera installed at each field. Oh, wow. So it's really not that big of a t uh, ticket, to be quite honest. Um, so it just depends on really what the wish list is and how we can do it. We can do multi cams on fields. We can do multi cams and events. The Performing Arts Center I'm talking to want to do three cameras: one on the left side of the stage, right side of the stage, and then you know, basically 50 yard line. Sure. And we have the ability to IP and remote into these cameras and basically update the views and change the views and kind of give the end user the experience they're looking for. I'm just, I got a love hate relationship with technology because you never know what's going to work, but sometimes when it does work, it's fascinating. I mean, oh, just works. us being able to zoom like this in your two hour distance and we're here we are in real time, crystal clear. Please. I know it's great. <laughs> and I think that's the big moment with what we're doing. You know, parents want to stay connected. Um, youth sports is a really big industry. They're spending a lot of money on this. You know, in my opinion, we, they shut down our league last, uh, last season, so we haven't been able to play. And the second they say we can, obviously I'm throwing all the money at it and we're going to be there. And you know, this gives us a tool as well to social distance and, and watch and stay a part of that action going so for, forward. So for families like that, they could have all the, the, the regular main cameras and they could have another camera where the players can actually come on and do little interviews, kind of like the, the weigh-ins for UFC fights or whatever. And Absolutely. then grandma and grandpa can get to see close-ups of their, their kid instead of way out there in left field. They're actually there. And they're very cool. Yeah, we've, we're setting up uh, some showcase fields as well. So generally, some of these complexes, if they're talking to athletes that are trying to get recruited to colleges, they do showcases. And what they have to do now is they'll bring out camera crews and spend, you know, 20 grand or, or more on filming that. And then they have to go edit it back and then send that out. 
what we can do is put multiple cameras on a field, focus on certain things, whether for baseball, it could be focused on the pitch, the pitcher, the hitter. Um, they do skills training on, at short stop. So we can put cameras that focus right on that to really alleviate the costs on having to bring in, you know, an actual film crew to, to do this. I knew of a live stream company that just put cameras like in, in uh, like tourist locations and then they had to stay far enough away so you wouldn't get any facial recognition. Is there stuff that you got to deal with that or is it just signage in the venue or something that just says you may be recorded so you know get, you got our permission? Spot on. It's, uh, it's signage in the venue. Generally a lot of these venues and a lot of the leagues will have a waiver that you sign. It's just like a waiver you sign if your kids are going to a school. If we take a photo of your kid, can we use it in the yearbook or something like that? Um, we built this from a parent's mindset, so it's completely secure. Uh, you know exactly who's on. We are very you know, conscious of the fact that we're you know, filming and recording youth athletes. So there is always, uh, that question comes up, but it's completely secure. You know exactly who's on. And generally speaking, if you're at a field and you look to your left or right, there's gonna be 30, 40 people with their iPhone or Facebook Live trying to record anyway. So I think it's the world we're living in and it's, you know, something that you just mentioned, like we're able to do this on Zoom. Um, we're able to do that, but it's like parents can stay involved in that whole process and it's completely secure at the end of the day. Fascinating. <laughs> yeah, I think the, the, the underlying, like the silver lining here is that they get to keep this, this you know, data and this IP and, and all these moments that you know they may have missed before. Like my mother lives in Florida. She's watched my son play baseball for two years, and it's it's really brought them closer together because you know she lives across the country. She might not ever have been able to see any of his games, and now she can say, "Hey, Penn, I saw you guys play last night. You did great." And it's just that really kind of fun emotional connection that they get to keep as you know grandparent and and you know my son as well. It also has that kind of cool thing, like I saw you on TV, kind of thing. <laughs> Couldn't agree more. The, uh, we've got something called a snack bar TV, which is, if you think about it, it's almost like a, a red zone kind of thing, split screen where you can watch multiple fields. So at certain leagues, we have a snack bar TV where it's got all four fields going at once. And even though the game's 20 feet away, all the kids huddle around it and they watch it. And they, they genuinely believe that they're on ESPN. And it's, it's a great moment for them because it, you know, keeps them motivated. And, you know, I, I still coach as well. So the other day, this kid Ryan came up and he's like, Coach Mike, are we going to be on TV? <laughs> I was like, yeah, we are going to be on TV. And, you know, it's just a fun moment for them to have that. And they can also come back after their game and make their own highlight clips and put that on their own social media. Well, and what that. some people don't realize is when this stuff goes out on the internet and stuff, you never know. There might be some, you know, high-end league mm -hmm. scout in Japan or something that sees somebody and says, I need that person. And then they end up definitely. I mean, a lot of the conversations now are that these these scouts can't travel to go watch players play. So we have the ability to you know have them remote in and they can watch certain players they're interested in and kind and of watch a whole big screen with about four or five different games going on at the same time, like the stock market. Yep, you've got it right. That's exactly how it is. Very cool. Well, this is kind of exciting. This is, I, I love doing these interviews and I'm meeting all these different people that have different stuff. I interviewed a guy that was the cigarette whisperer and he used to get people uh, to quit smoking and That's cool. psychics and shamans. And <laughs> yeah, hey, we're all, I live in California, so I'm familiar with all, all that. <laughs> <laughs> well, cool. Well, I don't like to make these too long, Mike, so I'm going to kind of pull this off how do people get a hold of you if for some reason they've got a league that they want to you know try something like this out how do they find you absolutely and they can go to our websites godogsports.com or godoggamestream.com and then my email address is mike at godogsports.com you know what we do is we basically start to scope out the facilities um, if you're interested in get in touch with me we'll look over the facility figure out where you want to put cameras we also have a partner uh, that has an, a nationwide uh, install team. So it's pretty easy for us to do this, scope it out. Once we organize the install, we can send it over to the install team. We're actually installing in El Paso, Texas next week. And, you know, like you said, we've done this all over Zoom and been able to create kind of a, an easy moment for these guys to allow for game streaming at their facilities as well. So being an entrepreneur, I got to ask one last question. That is, do you have an affiliate program? an affiliate program. We can look at that. We're, we've got a lot of conversations happening. Um, you know, we're looking at, you know, influencer programs as well. Um, but let me get back to you on that. But if, if you yeah, want to know that. more, email it's me. It's not that hard, not that hard, that hard to, hard to set up.
it's a matter of tracking links. Like um, I'm working with a company that provides solar installations. Mm -hmm. So if I get them a, a lead to install solar, it's a pretty healthy commission. And you got a more of a high ticket kind of thing. So yeah, we definitely have a, we definitely have dog for you. Commissionable, commissionable sales reps out there as well. Very cool. Well, I appreciate you taking the time again. I'm going to sign this off and beam it up to the universe. I'll have it to you in, within an hour. Sounds good. Thank you so much. And make sure you get, get in touch with me at mike at godogsports.com. Thanks, guys. Got it. Thank you. Peace.